Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad, and today we're gonna be continuing our journey in learning AWS. The main focus of today is gonna be IIM, which is gonna be the identity management within AWS. We're gonna go through different topics inside IIM, like users, groups, policies, policies document, how we can set it up, some demos on the actual AWS console as well, how we can utilize it within a terminal or basically programmatic access to our uh, portal. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. It will really help the channel. So now let's jump into it. So let's see what are we gonna be covering today related to IAM. So first things first, we're gonna be discussing what is IAM, how can, what is it, how can we use it? And then we're gonna be discussing what is a root account, what is a policy, what is a policy document, what are the IAM building blocks and how we can utilize them and how everything fit together. As well, we're gonna be discussing what is the least privilege principle and why is it really important. And we're gonna be discussing some of the information about identity provider. And at the end, we're gonna be actually going through the terminal and see how we can actually log in to the uh, AWS account utilizing our terminal. And we can see how we can set up our uh, IAM there as well. So let's get started. So what is IAM? In essence, IAM is an identity access management provided for us by default within AWS. It's a free service that everyone who has an AWS account will have, and it does not belong to any single region. It's a global service which is gonna be available within every single region. Again, it's a free service which is provided for us by AWS. But what does it do? Basically, this service will allow us to create users, create policies, create permissions, create groups, and assign all of them together. In essence, it will give us the power in order for us to actually add users to our AWS account, grant them access to certain resources or not grant them access to certain resources. As well, it allows us to actually um, group certain individuals under certain uh, for departments. For example, developers will be under the development department and they will be have, able to have access to certain development resources. On the other hand, for example, the cloud ops people will be able to have access to certain functionalities that the developers will not be able to. So all of these setup and all of these configuration related to users, groups, and permission is basically available for us through IAM. And again, this is a free service available for us through a, uh, from AWS. It does not belong to, uh, with, to any region it's a global service and basically uh, within every single permission uh, that we, we set we are able to actually set permissions per region but the actual service itself which is IAM is available for us for free and it does not belong to any single uh, region we're going to be seeing through uh, the demo at the end of this video what is IAM through the AWS console and we're going to be actually able to see uh, how we can actually set up users through the portal itself as well uh, how we can actually utilize them through the terminal so now let's discuss what is a root user. So in essence, a root user account is basically the email account that we have actually utilized in order for us to create our AWS account. So this admin account or this root account has basically full privileges of all of the AWS services. Every single aspect of AWS account, this root access has uh, access to. And this is the most powerful uh, account that you have uh, within your AWS services because basically it has the full power to do everything. So it's very wise that you should not have uh, or utilize this uh, account on daily basis. On the other hand, what you should do is basically you need to create a different uh, uh, admin account and basically utilize that admin account by setting up different policies or different access that that admin, admin account uh, will have. You should not use your root account uh, on daily basis or for anything that you need to utilize other than creating other user, as, uh, user account to manage them. And it's very uh, advisable or basically it's very important for that account uh, to uh, have uh, multi-factor authentication enabled in order for you to add an extra level of security. As well, there's other, other security features that is also uh, uh, advised that you should be uh, adding into it because again that's it's the most powerful uh, account that you have for your AWS and you need to protect it uh, in order for you to keep your information safe and as well to keep all of your resources uh, utilization and little and cost to the best uh, way possible 
So uh, in essence, uh, your uh, root account is basically the account that you utilize in order for you to create your AWS account. You need to protect it no matter what, have multi-factor authentication enabled, uh, and I implement all of the security measures that you need. As well, do not utilize this account on a daily basis. What you need to do is you need to create another uh, user, which is an admin, provide it with all of the access that you need, and then utilize that one while you keep the root account safe and only for the necessary uh, actions that you need to do within AWS. So what is a policy? In essence, a policy is basically the rule that we set within AWS to have uh, to give permission or to remove permission from a certain AWS resources. It's as simple as that. It's basically a rule to say, is this user allowed to access this uh, resource? Yes or no? And if they are allowed to access this resource, do we need to have a granular access? So we need to give them to certain functionalities to that resource. Are they only unable to see the logs, for example, or are they only unable to restart certain resources? Are they able to have full access? Are they able to deploy certain functionalities? Are they able, for example, to create new resources? So all of these can actually be set through policies. And basically, policies can be set in two different ways. There's a graphical user interface, which AWS provides for us, where we can actually go there and actually fill it in uh, utilizing like a wizard where we can actually go fill in the policy that we need and we click on next and we assign the users. On the other hand, there is a way where we can actually do it programmatically through JSON. And basically from that aspect, we were able to actually have a more granular uh, and uh, access where we can actually enable step by step what do we want through a JSON request and it's really really important for us to be able to read the JSON format of a policy we're going to go through it in the next slide but for now we're just going to go through the uh, main types which is basically we can set it through a graphical user interface as well through JSON as well policies have two types so basically there is the default types of policy which is provided for us from the box out of the box from AWS and basically there's a custom policies that we have. So the default policies, we're gonna be able to see them next. And basically in essence, they are some of the policies that AWS created for us in order for us to manage those resources. The custom one that we create ourselves in order for us to be actually, uh, to create certain policies depending on our need. So for example, I say I create a user and I only want them to be able to access the logs. I don't want them to be able to access certain uh, anything else, but I want these logs to be, for example, for all the different uh, uh, EC2 services, for example. So I can do that within a policy when I write it default, for example, in JSON. I can find something policy like similar to that in our custom ones, but I might not find to the exact need that I want. So that's why it's always advisable if you want to have something so specific and so custom, you need to create your own custom policy either through the graphical user interface or through the JSON file. Before we jump into the uh, browser and we can actually see the AWS uh, policy there and the AS portal. Let us uh, take a look at uh, the AWS policy document. So in essence, as we can see here, this is an AWS policy document. And it, we can see it's a very simple JSON document. And again, this is a very simple example. Uh, we have a lot of, uh, it can go very, very, very complicated, but we're gonna be starting with something really easy and really uh, feasible for us to understand from the get go. So we can see here that this is a simple JSON and we can see here that uh, it has two main components. The first one is the version of this actual policy document and the second one is the statement. So the version is when did we create this policy for example it's already enabled from there and the second one is the statement and this is really the most important part because basically we can see we have an array inside our uh, JSON uh, element. And basically within this array, we can set all of the policies that we wanna allow or, or, uh, or prevent uh, for uh, resources that we want the user to access or not. So we can see within a statement, we are assigning in an array uh, uh, of permissions. So basically inside the statement, we, for example, we can assign permissions to EC2, we can assign uh, permissions to uh, Fargate, uh, to uh, EKS, so on and so forth. So we can assign all of these statements directly from here and we can see for then every single item of the array that we have there is three main actions so the first one is the effect do we want to allow or do we want to deny the permission so that's going to be the effect the action is basically we want what actions within that resource we want to actually give permission to so we want to allow the action to create we want to allow the action to delete we want to allow the action to edit for example uh, to view so on and so forth 
and lastly is going to be the resources so the resource is to actually which item uh, or uh, of our AWS service we want to grant the access to and in this example here we can see that for the action and for the resource we have given the star and basically the star means here that we are basically giving access to every single functionality it's like a wild card we did not specify any action in specific but we have basically given them the wild card and basically in essence the wild card give them the ability to do all of the certain actions and similarly for the resources itself inside the resources here we also have given them the star which is going to be the wild card which in essence uh, we give them all of the available resources so they can do uh, basically anything that they want within our aws account and usually this uh, active policy document is available for the admin account so we said previously that we have the user uh, root uh, root account that we should not utilize at all and we need to create an admin account and that admin account basically some uh, some policies that we can give them is something similar to that so they have access to every single functionality inside our uh, AWS services. So uh, again, like a quick summary, uh, in a statement, we put all of the uh, actions that we wanna, uh, actually all of the permissions that we wanna grant or not grant uh, or deny to any single user. And basically within every single uh, permission that we wanna give, there's an effect, an action and the resource. Effect is basically, do we wanna allow or deny the action to uh, basically what the user can do depending on uh, the resource that we wanna give. And lastly, the resource to which resource we wanna actually give uh, that uh, permission to. So uh, this is a very simple admin one. And again, uh, it's really important for us to be able to read this specifically in the AWS exam, because uh, they're gonna be asking us and how actually they're gonna give us, I think our policy document, which we need to read and answer our questions based on those policy documents. So it's very important for us to familiarize ourselves with these uh, documents and basically how we can actually read them and make sense of them. Uh, and now uh, let us take a look at the AWS portal and see uh, basically the policies in action. So basically this is my AWS console and if you want to access IAM what we can do is we can see here we have services. If I click on services what I need to do is for example I can go all the way down until I see security, identity and compliance and from here I can see that I have IAM uh, for me available. Another aspect which I can utilize is go through services and I can see that it's one of the recent, most recent one that I have visited here I am or what I can do in the search I can type I am and it will appear for me. So they have multiple ways where we can find I am inside my AWS uh, console. For now uh, we can choose any one that we want to. I'm gonna start it so it will be available for me and once I click on I am it's gonna redirect me to the I am portal. And as we can see here that I have my IAM account uh, available for me. Let me zoom in. And basically, in essence, uh, I can see that I have one uh, root user and I have one another user, which is my account to use. And we're gonna be taking a look at our policies. And we can see here that I have a lot of policies available for me. And as we said before, there is two types of policies that exist. So in essence, we have the default policies that AWS provide for us. And another one is basically the custom policy that we can create. So how can we differentiate uh, by the policies that is basically created for us from AWS and the policies that we create ourselves? So as we can see here from this list that all of the policies that are currently available have not created any custom policy. It has this small AWS icon next to it, which is like a small box, uh, which basically it is the AWS policy. And if we click on it, we can see here that we have our a policy document which basically in essence describe what are we able to do uh, within this uh, actual policy so for example for this one uh, which is basically aws direct connect read only access we can see that we have inside the we have the version which is basically when this has been created we have the statement and as we said it's an array and inside of that we have the effect which basically allow and basically we set the resources to all of them but the actions here we can see that they are only allowed to de describe list for the direct connect as well for uh, the ec2s they are basically described the vpn gateway as well as describe the uh, transit gateway so we have here like excuse me 
two actions for every single service so for example for direct connect we have the actions of uh, describe and list on the other hand for ec2 we have the describe for the vpn gateways and describe for the uh, transit gateway so for these two we are uh, giving them the ability to actually only describe and we are assigning them to this policy and this policy is available out of the box uh, from aws to actually for us to utilize on the other hand let's say if i want to create my own policy all i need to do is go to the uh, button here which says create policy and once i click on it uh, it's gonna take me to like a, a wizard where I actually utilize in order for me to fill the policies. So we can see here that I need to click on the service. So I need to select which service I need to create this policy for. And I can see here that AWS will give me the list of all of the services that I can, I can, I can actually utilize. So uh, in essence, what I wanna do is for example, I wanna add uh, a policy for the Elastic Container Registry. So I click on that. And we can see here that what do I want to do with this policy? So do I want to give full access? So I click on that or do I want to give a specific granular access? So for example, for this policy here, what I want to do is I want to give the ability to, uh, let's say to read and that's it. All I want to give is this policy to read for it. Let's change it a bit to make it more custom. Again, I'm going to delete this later on because I don't really need it, but so we can understand how we can create a custom one. And I'm going to allow tagging, for example, and I'm going to add the list images, only those, for example. So once I have created or selected the access tabber, we can see here I have uh, in total 13 access that I have uh, chosen. And if I click on next, it's going to tell me that specify the resource group. So if I click on resources here, it's going to ask me, so to which resources do you want to uh, specify? Do I want to specify it to a single uh, uh, elastic container that I have, or I want to give it to all access to all of my containers? So for example, uh, I want to, for example, for now, I'm just going to say it's going to be available for all resources. Again, I'm going to delete this later on, but we can see here that it's going to be available for all of them. And once I do all of that, I click on next. And it's gonna ask me, do you wanna create a tag? So for now, we can just say dust uh, and then say policy add tag. And only one should be enough. And now I'm gonna do the review where it's actually gonna give me uh, like a summary. I need to give it a name. I'm gonna say custom uh, ECR policy poly, policy. Uh, description i'm gonna say to be deleted uh anything else here no i don't need anything else so i'm just gonna create a policy and we can see here that we got the confirmation that uh and the, our policy has been created and we can see here that the first of all that i got the, the type change which is gonna be that uh, customer manager, which means that I have created it, which means the custom policy that I have created it. As well, uh, another way that we can tell this is a custom one and not available for us uh, through AWS, that we can see here that the box that exists here does not exist for the policy that we have created. It's only available for the one which is available through AWS. So if I take a look here, we can see mine does not have the box and the AWS one has the box. So that's a big indicator to see which one is available by default from AWS and which is not available by default from it or a custom one basically so if i want to see the json document or the policy document if i click here what i can do is i can see basically all of the information that i have so here for example the first one is the sid it told it told us that i have been created it through the visual basically through the graphical user interface and the effect here is allow and basically i'm telling it that for the ECR, which is the uh, Elastic Container Registry, I'm basically uh, giving them this permission to get the registry uh, policy, describe image, so on and so forth, so all of these. And I'm giving them to all of the ECR. It's not a single ECR in specific, I'm giving it access to all. So for example, uh, what I can do is I can edit it even. So if I click on edit here, I can, for example, because if you remember, uh, we had 13. So in essence, right now, we can see here we have 13 actions. So if I click here, I can edit it from here or I can go to the JSON file. And for example, I can delete these and I can save. And now we should have seven instead of 13. So if I click on review policy, now we can see that should have been updated to uh, uh, seven. So let's save it. 
and now we can see it has been updated and now if I go here and we can see it has been updated and we have seven which is available so we can see there's a lot of flexibility here when we're creating our policies and again uh, you need to familiarize yourself with these policies so you need to go in and check them out and understand what do they do you don't have to memorize them all uh, by heart but at least you will be able to understand if it says for example what why do we have ecr here ecr means it's referred to the service that we want and then this is actually the functionality that we want to do so this in this uh, uh, in this essence as well we can see under actions we have it inside of an array which means that we can assign multiple actions to a single policy which is really good so uh, what I'm going to do right now is basically I'm going to choose this. I'm going to click on actions and I'm going to delete it because I don't need it right now. And I'm just going to copy this. Um, I'm going to paste it here and basically policy has been deleted. Perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. So now let's go back to the slide and we'll continue from there. So now that we have covered what is a policy document and how does it work, uh, it's important for us to see or understand how we can actually implement it. So basically, an IAM policy uh, or policy document, it can be implemented to groups, to users, to roles, and all of that. So we can actually implement that policy to every single aspect of those. We can actually create a group and we can assign a policy to it. We can create users and we can assign custom policy to them and we can create roles and assign actually policy to them. But, but what is the best way we can actually do that for? So in essence is, uh, let's think about it. Let's say I have 10 users. Uh, within my development department and I have another 15 users within other departments so on and so forth I don't really want to give a granular permission to every single user by itself because for example if I want to give permission to a certain user and then give permission to a different user and another user and another user it's going to become really hard for me to actually manage all of these permissions and what happened if for example for any reason I want to remove certain permission from a certain users and I need to actually know if they have access to it or not it's going to become a very hard for me to manage all of those permissions so that's why it's really advisable that if we're going to create permissions or create policies is to actually assign these uh, users into a single group and basically once I assign these users to a certain group what I can do there is I can actually assign policies uh, to that group where the users belong to so for example let's say I have a group of developers so instead of giving a certain developer certain access uh, and manual access to every single one of them what I can do is I can group them all in a single group and once I group them all in a single group I can give that uh, policy to that group itself and that way all of the developers will be able to have access to the same uh, privileges basically uh, so that way I can uh, fir first of all I can facilitate my life because basically I will be able to have one place where I can manage access to all of the developments as well on the other hand I only have to worry to see if this person has access to stuff that they don't have ac need access to for example if I have uh, let's say an uh, uh, let's say uh, finance department I don't really want to give access to finance department to basically to create EC2 instances because it doesn't really make sense why do they need access to initiate EC2 instances as well on the other hand I don't really want to give permissions to developers uh, to have ability to go to the uh, DevOps environments and actually to, to the production environments and basically deploy directly there so again we can see here the benefits of basically creating groups and basically from there assigning certain policies to those groups in order for me to manage my access so basically once we have covered all of these and uh, we have familiarized ourselves uh, uh, with all of these aspects it needs for us now it's good for us to now for to understand what is the building blocks of all of the IMs IM is formed of three things the user itself the groups as well as the AWS roles we have actually covered uh, a bit of every single one of them but right now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be explaining every single one of these uh, together uh, individually and together so we can actually understand how they actually fit uh, within a single umbrella so first of all let's discuss what is a user in essence a user is the person that we want to actually give the uh, access to on AWS, our aws account so for example this could be a developer qa uh, cloud ops financial uh, uh, i don't know monitoring maybe so this is going to be the actual person that they're going to be able to have access to aws so for example if i'm a developer uh, I want to create, for example, if I have four developers, for example, I need to create four accounts for every single as, uh, for every single one of these developers that we have. If I have two QAs, I need to give uh, create two accounts for every single uh, one of these QAs. Uh, it's basically every user represents a single human being. 
a user equal a human being and again uh, sharing accounts between uh, users is not allowed so for example or it's not at all recommended you can do it but it's not really good so for example if i have four developers i need to have uh, four users if i have two qas i need to have two uh, users for these qas so i need it needs to be equal i cannot create two accounts for four developers and they are they share this is not the way that it needs to be done for every single user it needs to have a single a human uh, attached to it so basically every single person have their own unique individual account so i cannot share them as well once we create those users it's really important for us to actually enable certain functionalities so we need to enforce for example multi-factor authentication for every single users because basically if uh, if uh, uh, any of those users for example their password got leaked they will not they will not be able to, the person who got the password will not be able to log into their account without actually having the second uh, second way basically of the verification layer which is the multi-factor authentication another point that was, which is really important for us is basically in for us to understand how we can actually set the limitation for every user so for example uh, we need to once we create those users it's really important for us to actually uh, put them in a certain group which is going to be the next uh, point that we're going to be discussing but uh, by default uh, it's really important for us to understand that once we create that user that user by default out of the box do not have any single permission on AWS nothing they are basically they have an account but they cannot do anything with it unless we go in and actually start giving them permission uh, they will uh, start actually seeing uh, items popping up that they are actually able to do but other than that once the user is created on AWS they don't have any single access to any single service it's basically an account with no access at all so that's why it's really important for us to once that account has been created to go in manually and actually start adding the uh, users or basically start adding the privileges through the policies to those users so this is a point that we really need to understand that by default no access is or uh, no access is given or no policy is given to that users out of the box so that's the first item again we can think of users as well in two different ways so as we said a single user uh, can uh, is attached to a human again uh, there's a there's another types of users which basically in essence it's a programmatic access so for example let's say i want to uh, deploy uh, for example uh, uh, my my information my application through my computer directly so what i need to do is i need to create a programmatic access for my user as well other than actually log into my console so we can see here that i have two types of access the first access is actually the ability for me to uh, log into aws through the website through my web browser and actually go to the portal and do whatever i need to do there the other one which is really important is through the terminal for example if i want to go log in through the terminal upload my application through the create different services manage different services through my terminals so that's called a programmatic access and this is really important for for example we want to deploy we want to manage certain aws services uh, through uh, through our service for example it's always advisable to do it programmatically and that's why we have two different types of access so which is going to be first which is going to be the graphical user interface and the other one is going to be programmatic and when we create a user which we're going to be checking a demo after that how we can create it we can see how we can actually check up uh, which options that we need uh, or which option do we have in order for us to actually create a user so a quick summary a user is basically a attached to a person uh, we should not share uh, users credentials every single user uh, once they are created they don't have any privileges and we need to add those privileges later on and basically there is two types of access when we create a user basically going to be through the graphical user interface through the web browser another one is going to be programmatic so once we have created those users the next uh, step that we need to discuss is going to be groups so as we said before let's say i have a group of developers with 10 developers and two qas for example I can set all of these uh, users that I have created for developers under a single group, which is called uh, devs, and uh, basically I can assign roles to or assign uh, privileges to the group and the whole instead of giving permission to every single developer by themselves what i can do is i can set a group permission to all of these developers in a single group and then from there on all of them will share the same group the same same privileges uh, so that way i can basically control uh, through uh, on a group level the policies that uh, these uh, developers will have instead of doing it on an individual level so that's really important groups is a very nice way for us to actually try to mimic our uh, current organization within aws and lastly it's going to be aws roles and basically aws roles is going to be a bit uh, hard for us to uh, 
uh, explain it uh, or basically to uh, get uh, 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 to get to the point directly but in essence let's say we have uh, a web application uh, which is basically running let's say it's an ec2 instance uh, which is basically running our web application and we have our database uh, our database which is basically uh, an rds uh, if you don't know what an RDS or EC2, don't worry. It's basically a web server and a database hosted on AWS. And let's say the way that our web application and our uh, database communicate through a username and a password. So that's a very standard way and very secure, uh, to a certain extent, uh, extent, secure way where the application will be able to have access to the database and basically they can do all of the requests, so on and so forth. But an extra level of security is to have an AWS role. So what does that mean? So uh, and what we can do is for that EC2 instance by itself, which is basically the virtual machine that is running, we can give it a role. And that role, uh, through a policy, of course, uh, can have, for example, access to uh, access the database. So we can create a policy which says that this certain uh, virtual machine will have access to this database. And that role, when we attach it, that will give it an extra level of security other than actually having only the username and a password. So within AWS role, we can have more level of securities into our application. And it's basically uh, uh, provide us with more uh, protective ways to protect our data. As well, it will allow us to, uh, to customize the access for different services when they want to communicate with each other. So let's say we have a virtual machine and a database, we can create certain AWS roles to manage these connections. We have an ECR and AKS, for example, we have a container registry and we have a Kubernetes service. We can also, also utilize roles in order for us to manage uh, those privileges between those two services and those policies and how they can communicate. So we can see here that these are the basically the building blocks of our uh, 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 I am and this is really important for us to understand. So what I'm gonna do right now is uh, we're gonna go through uh, the uh, graphical user interface with a web browser and we're gonna see how we can create a user, how we can create a group and how we can assign them quickly. And after that, we're gonna put everything together and we can see how we can uh, see the full picture from that. So as we see here, again, I'm back into my AWS uh, portal and let me zoom in more. Uh, why is not zooming in? Let's see. Okay, let's zoom in more. And what I'm gonna do is I can go to the users and I can see here that I have one single user available for me. So I'm gonna try to add another user. And basically, as we said, it's gonna be every single user is gonna belong to a single human. So for example, I'm gonna call this user uh, Muhammad underscore Lawand Dav. I don't, know, I don't know, I'll just give it a random name. And we can see here that as soon as uh, I put my user information, it's going to ask me, do you want to give it a programmatic access or a management console access? So as we said, the programmatic access, it will allow us to connect through AWS, through our CLI, SDK, and API. So basically, it allow, it allow us to basically utilize it from a development point of view when deploying our application, creating different services for our application. It allows us uh, to, to do this programmatically. Another one is basically just to have access to this graphical user, in, user interface without actually having access to the CLI. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to choose both. And once I choose both, we can see here that it's going to ask me, do you want to auto-generate a password or want to give the user a random password? So it's always better to utilize a, a auto-generated one and uh, enable always the restart. So once the user log in to, uh, for the first time and activate their account, they will be able to actually reset the password and utilize the auto-generated one. So once I did that, next, is basically here, uh, it's gonna ask me if I wanna assign certain permissions. So right now, uh, what I do, what, what I have here is basically, uh, I have one single group, which is the admin group, which I created previously. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna assign this user to the group. What I'm gonna do is basically, I'm gonna create a new group. And basically I'm gonna call this group uh, devs. And once I created uh, the group, I wanna assign certain policies. So let's say I wanna only give them access to uh, EC2, let's see. And we can see here that all these are all of the EC2 instances that I have. Uh, let's, uh, let's say for example, I wanna uh, give them access, Amazon EC2 full access. So I wanna only wanna give them access to the EC2 service. For the development developers, I only wanna give them access to my virtual machine services. I don't wanna give them access to anything else. So that's why I can only choose this one, for example. 
and I can create a create group. So right now a new group is going to be created and I want to assign this a new user, which is Muhammad Dove. And I can click, let's see if I click here on set permission boundaries. So it's going to ask me uh, to set the permission uh, boundaries for this user right now. Uh, so I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to click on next. Do I want tags? No, I don't really want tags. Click on review. It's going to give me a quick summary. So this is the username for the user. Uh, it's going to give me the summary that I have created that as a programmatic access as well as access to the console. The password is going to be auto generated and we can see here which uh, groups that I belong to, which is the policy that exists within this group. And if I click on create user we can see here that we have basically the user has created, which is great. But something that we really need to pay attention to is we can see here that this is our access ID and this is going to be the secret and a password. So in essence, uh, because we have enabled for this user to have a uh, an access through uh, a programmatic access, we're going to get an access ID, a secret and a password. So these differed from the username and a password that we have when to log in uh, to our uh, console. So these are only going to be available for us to utilize and for us to connect to AWS through our CLI. So these basically, in essence, will not allow us to log into the console from a web browser. It's only going to allow us to utilize AWS from the command prompt or basically from the terminal. So it's really important for us to copy these and basically it's going to give us the ability to download them or send them to mail to ourselves. And the, the thing that we really need to pay attention for that this information here, the secret and the password and the access key is only going to be available once. So once we create it, it's only going to be available for us at one time. And after that, we're not going to be able to see them again. So that's why it's really important for us to either download them and keep, in the, keep them in a secure place or send them to us in an email and then keep them in a secure place because we're only going to be able to see this information once. So once we have got all of that, we actually we are, uh, we are able to uh, log in through, uh, to AWS through our uh, command line. And once we have done all of that, now let's go back to IAM. And once we go to IAM, let's go to users. And we can see here that my user has been created. And I can see the group that belong to, uh, when, what's the password age, when is the last activity, so on and so forth. And if I click on my user, I will be able to see the different policies that they have, so on and so forth, which group do they belong to, uh, and so on. So I can manage my users from here. So this is really important. So within this uh, small demo, we were able to actually create a user, create a group, and assign permissions to the group, and then assign it to the user. So that's, in, in essence, uh, uh, what we need to do. And let me just mention one more thing. So let's go back to permissions. What I can do as well is I don't really have to add directly to a group, but I can uh, as well add a certain policy. So I can see here, uh, attach a certain policy and I can choose a certain policy directly from here and attach it instead of actually create it to a group. But again, this is not recommended because we don't want to add specific policies, specific users. And we need to basically put those permissions or policies on a group level. So let's go back to our slides now. So as we can see here from uh, this slide that basically here, everything's gonna uh, go together. So we can see here that we have a group of users, which is basically called the Davi group, and they have a three policy attached with them. We have QAs, which is gonna be another group, uh, which also have four policies, and we have the release group, which only have the single policy. And we can see that uh, those Duffy groups have only access to the development servers. On the other hand, the QAs have access to the QA servers, and the uh, release group have only access to the production servers. So we can see here how we have created, for example, 9, uh, say 9, 12, 13, 15 users. So we have 15 users inside this group, uh, inside this uh, slide here. So 15 users are divided into four different groups. So uh, nine of them are devs, three of them are QAs, uh, one is release and one, uh, two is cloud ops. So we can see how we can actually create 15 users and we have divided them into groups. And we have basically gave, uh, for every single group, we have gave them access to a certain environment. So for example, for the dev, we only gave them access to the dev servers, QA to the Q uh, QA service, and release group to the production service. On the other hand, we can see how the cloud ops group have access to everything. So we can see here that the dev 
devs have only access to the development service and this is the policy that manages their access for QAs, uh, for the QA service and this is the policy that manages their access and for the release group to the production and the policy for uh, production service and we can see here the cloud ops groups have access to everything and they have one single policy which is manage all of their access which is exactly what we want and we can see here that through this uh, we are able to actually uh, divide uh, our users based on their needs give them the permission that they only need to and only give them the ability to uh, do what they need to without actually give them access to everything so in essence uh, i am give us the ability to control uh, the permissions for every single user as well only give uh, the right people the right access that they need to uh, least privilege principle which we have already touched on before which is once we create a user every single user will only have once we create them will not have any single uh, permission or any privilege or any policy we need to add them manually so basically we only give them permissions on based on what we need we don't give them a general permission and then they can see what they want no and uh, completely opposite we only give them permissions to all uh, the service that they actually need to on another hand, what is an identity provider, which is something that we need to understand within uh, uh, IAM, which basically, if we know what an Active Directory is, which is, uh, let's say, every single day when you go to work, you want to log into your work computer and you log in through your work email. So how does that work? You're going to have a central computer somewhere, which is called an Active Directory. And that Active Directory has your information, your work email, your your name, uh, your password, so on and so forth. So when you log in, it will authenticate with that Active Directory. So, uh, and you were able to access your work laptop, so, or your work computer. So if you want to utilize those credentials to access uh, AWS services, you can do that by having an identity provider. So what you need to do is you need to link your Active Directory, which most probably is gonna be the Microsoft Active Directory with the AWS identity providers. And you can create like a trust connection between them. You for example, uh, using SAML, and in essence, once you log into your computer, you're going to be automatically logged into your AWS account. That's something for uh, uh, for later on. Uh, we're not going to really delve into it right now. But basically, in essence, it's a way to have a single sign-on functionality uh, to your AWS account through your uh, Active Directory or your work account email. So uh, this is in essence. Now, right now, what, what we're going to be doing is uh, we saw how we can actually create uh, our AWS account uh, through uh, the browser or basically how we can manage through the browser what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing some experimentation through the terminal i'm going to give you a couple of codes where you can actually check it yourselves so now let's check it out so what do you need in, if you want to actually utilize aws cli so in essence you're going to be needing two things the first thing uh, you need is going to be you're going to be needing an aws account so if it's your own personal account you need to create an account which has programmatic access uh, as we have uh, discussed before on the other hand if it's not your account uh, what you need to do is you need to tell your aws admin that you need programmatic access so they can actually provide you an account without programmatic access so that's the first thing the second thing is you need to install the aws cli on your machine so we're going to go through the steps right now how you can actually install your aws cli on your machine and how you can set it up and how you can do some basic commands with it so uh, i'm gonna be doing this on a mac but doing it also on a uh, windows computer or a, a linux is going to be also very similar and very easy so let's get started so if you have a mac i highly recommend that you can actually install uh, your aws cli through homebrew but uh, first of all uh, in order for you to start with uh, an AWS CLI, you need, what you need to do is you need to go to aws.amazon.com forward slash CLI and you're going to get through this page. And here you can see that you're going to have abilities to go download it for Windows, for Mac OS and for Linux. And in essence here for Mac OS, it's telling us to need, we need to download the package, which is fine and we can install it through there. But I highly recommend that you can actually utilize it through Homebrew. So let's go through Homebrew. And if you don't know what a homebrew is, it's basically, in essence, it's a, a service provider. It's a package provider, which is free. Uh, you can actually download it uh, through your terminal. So let's open our terminal. Uh, I think the font's going to be really small. Let me see if I can make it bigger. Uh, font, font. Change. Okay, let's see this one. So instead of 12, let's make it 34. Did 
Did it do anything? Let's see. Nope. Uh, change. Oh, that's too much. 40. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, nope. Let's see how we can increase the font. Apologies for that. Maybe I need to close it and reopen it. Yeah. So we can see here that this is my terminal and I have basically, in essence, uh, uh, what I need to do is I need to install Homebrew. So once you install Homebrew, so let's go to the main website. All you need to do is let's put, let's go down, let's put here, install Homebrew. If we go here, all you need to do is going to be very simple. If you have a Mac or Linux, just copy this. Uh, where is it? Uh, it's actually on the home page. So let's see the home page. It's very simple. All you need to do is just copy this link here and paste it in your terminal. So let's do that. I already installed it, but all you need to do is do that and click on enter. It will do all of the work for you to install it. And once you install it, what you need to do is you need to choose the AWS CLI. So let's copy this one and I'm going to paste it here. I have already installed it, so it's going to tell me that this brew is already installed. It's going to take a few minutes to be completed. And it's going to tell me that the latest version is already installed. What do I want to do? I don't want to do anything. So once I uh, uh, once I have installed my AWS CLI, so that's a one way to do it. Another way, sorry, to do it is just download this package and go through the uh, uh, through the wizard. Next, next, next. I I like Homebrew because it automatically updated whenever you update your Homebrew. Uh, it keeps it up to date instead of you having to do it manually. Uh, on the other side, uh, once we have done all of that, now we need to actually check that AWS. Uh, we need to actually set add the configuration for our AWS account. So in order for you to do that, uh, what you need to do is inside the terminal, you need to type, type AWS configure. And once you type that, it's gonna ask you uh, to basically uh, input the access ID. I have already added them, but it's gonna ask me to do them again. I'm not gonna do it. So it's gonna ask you for the access ID, for the username and the password that we had before. And uh, uh, is it a key and a pass key? I think and a password. I can't really remember. So it's going to ask you for all of that. And once you have done all of that, basically your terminal is now connected to AWS. So once you have done all of that and you have added the AWS configure and you have filled all of the required information, uh, you can use the actual terminal, for example, even to create users to uh, manage policies. So let's see how we can create a user directly from the uh, terminal. So it's going to be very simple. Uh, because we're uh, connecting to AWS, we need to first put the AWS keyword. I need then I am because I'm a, this is a service that I'm actually utilizing from AWS. What is the functionality? I need to add a create user and then I need to give it a username. Or so put user dash name. And for example, I can put Muhammad Dov underscore test underscore one, for example. I can give it any name that I want. And if I click on enter now, this user is going to be created for me and we can see here that this user has been created this is the user id uh, this is the irn which is going to stand for amazon resource name and we can see here that my user has been created and right now if i go back to my iam and i click on users so let me go back and click on users here i need i will be able to see Oh, these are the groups. So let me see the users. I can see here that Muhammad underscore dev underscore test one has automatically been created for me. And I, I did that through directly the terminal. So let me delete this one because I don't really need it anymore. And let me delete this one as well because I don't really need it anymore. And once I deleted those, 
basically within the terminal i can do all of the stuff that i need to do and if you want to learn more about the terminal and how you can actually utilize the cli there's a lot of good documentation on aws's website you can see here they give us more like some example of how we can for example utilize aws ec2 to describe an instance some help auto scaling you can do basically a lot of things everything you can do in the browser almost you can do it directly within uh, the cli so hopefully uh, this video has been helpful this is kind of this is uh, part two uh, of our uh, journey to learning uh, aws and uh, if you have any questions please put them in the comments down below i'll try my best to answer them uh, if you have any clarification as well uh, please like share and subscribe if you like this video uh, it will help me make more videos like these and uh, yeah thanks again for watching and have a good day